herb. Herb is a plant. I mean, herbs are good for everything. Welcome to Eugene Cannabis TV. You got Dank, your host, and we got some interesting news stories to talk about. And the most important thing we have is we have our friend Jeff Newcomb back. If you're an old time uh, uh, fan of the Eugene Cannabis TV show, you might remember Jeff back in the years past. And uh, Jeff moved to California, and uh, like so many of us, uh, when we have friends move, we say, you're going to be back. So here he is, I'm back. It's like a bag dad. Yeah, I'm back. I go back. <laughs> so back. thanks so much, uh, Jeff, for coming. No and uh, this is a real treat. Uh, Jeff uh, is a head injury victim. He had a skateboard accident. And uh, you're old, how old were you then? 16. 16, that's all, yeah. And I like to ask, and I have asked him, I didn't ask him this time, but I've asked him before. And I said, Jeff, would you mind speaking to the kids out there that are on skateboards, do you have any words for them? And you'd like to uh, give them a little advice, I think, don't you? Yeah, wear a helmet. If you don't wear a helmet, it's stupid. Wear a helmet. I mean... There you go. It could just I, take one yeah. rack, just one little incident, and it can mess up your life forever. Forever. Just, and and ever. Jeff is here to tell you about it, you know. But medical marijuana has, has really, really helped Jeff. I don't know hardly anybody that's as supportive of medical marijuana as Jeff is. Uh, Jeff Houston's got his electric wheelchair. I remember I used to tell stories about we'd go to, we'd have meetings and uh, uh, we'd break up the meeting and, and I'd find Jeff, and I would pass Jeff. He'd be halfway to town by the time I, you know, I mean, he's just buzzing along, man, <laughs> covering mm -hmm. the count, he's buzzing along. Here. But anyway, uh, so uh, how long uh, were you smoking? How long, I mean, when did you first discover the medical benefits of mm -hmm. medical marijuana for you, I wonder? Probably like. I would say 1998, like right, right, that's right, I got license in 98 up here. Mm -hmm. 98, yeah, 98. and you were how old, so you were how old then? I were probably, what was it? Yeah, I know, I, don't worry about it, I would have the same trouble. I might have been 20, 20, 20, also. Okay, oh yeah. I, uh, yeah, I used to ask John Walsh, you know, we were speaking of John Walsh, I always asked him about yeah. dates, because yeah. he was really yeah. good on yeah. dates, you know, and I would ask him about that, and now John's gone, I don't have my guy, <laughs> my, my guy I can uh, ask <laughs> what date, you know, what, what uh, yeah, John's gone now. stuff happening. Anyway, uh, let me do some quick announcements here. Uh, they're coming up real quick. Uh, the Oregon Medical Marijuana, uh, no, excuse me, the Oregon Marijuana Business Conference is uh, this Sunday uh, at the uh, uh, OMBC. Uh, the organizer is Alex Rogers. He's the owner of the two uh, alternative Oregon clinics in the state. They're medical marijuana clinics. Uh, I've worked with Alex before. Uh, but anyway, uh, so with a keynote, speak, a keynote speech by Dr. Carl Hart from Columbia University, eight panels of speakers, including OLCC staff and industry attorneys, plus an exclusive interview with the legendary Tommy Chong. Now, uh, ticket information is the tickets uh, include all speaker sessions and the exhibitor area, as well as entry into our private after party with Tommy Chong on Sunday night at, well, at the Well Hall. And it's only a hundred and ninety nine dollars. <laughs> Pretty cheap. Price goes to two hundred and fifty dollars Saturday the twenty third at midnight. That's uh, now if you want the conference ticket and the Saturday night VIP reception with Dr. Carl Hart, uh, then uh, that's a two hundred and ninety nine dollars. But anyway, that's at OregonMBC.com if you want to check that out and if you've got deep pockets I guess so uh, yeah, to me, see, the thing about me about this is uh, how can the, some, the ordinary person be able to ever meet Tommy Chong, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. I walked out and saw him at a normal conference and got to speak to him. So I got to speak to him. I wouldn't say I particularly I really met him, but I did get to speak to him. But anyway, uh, no, but now here, if you got deep pockets, then you can go see him, you know? Mm -hmm. and, that's, and, and, you know, back in the day when we had events, all of our active friends got in. We didn't charge them 200 bucks to go yeah, see, you know. Yeah, so, but that's a new pay-to-play is what they're calling Great. it. 
Anyway, uh, so that's, uh, that's the Oregon uh, Business Conference. And then I also wanted to talk about, this is really exciting, and this is something that you don't know about, Jeff, I don't think, but this is uh, Oregon Analytical and Oregon's Hans Constant Gardener. Uh, the Oregon Analytical is a company mm -hmm. that tests uh, uh, marijuana right. for THC yeah. and all that. Yeah. And then Oregon's Constant Gardener is a yeah, grow I'm, shop. I'm, with, I'm, I'm yeah. Yeah. Well, they're both uh, uh, sponsoring this. And the last Tuesday of every month at the Cosmic, which is, and that's what the, they call it World Pies Downtown now, okay. but... But we, well, we all know it as a cosmic. But anyway, that's at 199 West 8th. That's at 6 p.m. and it'll go till about 8. And there's free admission. So that's this coming uh, uh, week from tomorrow, uh, as we film this. Uh, it'll be uh, uh, April 26th. So anyway, there's no reason not to go. It's free. And what they're going to be talking about this time is the organic certification. See, each time they have on these science pubs, they take a particular subject. They have several speakers in a panel. Oh, no, back up. They start with a question and answer session. And the people from the audience, if they can answer the question correctly, then they win a prize, like a T-shirt or something, you know. And cool. then they have a panel to discuss the topic of the day. Okay. Uh, and anyway, it's a really nice event, and uh, it's well worth it. Uh, I mean, in fact, it's, it's free for one thing. But uh, anyway, uh, and I appreciate the OG Analytical and Oregon's Constant Gardener. Uh, I'm really impressed that they're putting on events that are free to the public, you know, as opposed to like this business conference, <laughs> you know. So uh, pay to play is what we call that. And uh, the Hemp Fest, I haven't talked to you too much about the Hemp Fest, but uh, we're, we're uh, battling along. Uh, we got denied the use of the park. Yeah, I know you know that, that okay. Know and uh, we uh, went through an appeal and we were working on a second appeal. and. We kind of run out of time, and uh, the money hasn't been coming in like we'd hoped it would to uh, help us with it. So I'm not sure what we're going to where we're going with that yet. But we, it'll happen. I mean, the Hemp Fest will happen. It's just a matter of where. We're looking at other venues in case the worst does happen. Uh, in the original hearing, the Parks Department director did mention. He said, "Well, maybe they should take a year off." So I thought, year? well, if we yeah. if we can't do it this year, maybe we could try to come back again next year Thank and do it at the park. Right. They you know. And when I'm taking a year off? Well, no, I mean, I mean, no, no, I mean, take a year off from being at the park. Okay. No, no, no. We're still planning going forward. We're just looking for other okay. venues. Uh, we were interested in Springfield. If we could find something, unfortunately, day on the park is going to be in use, so that uh, that's out. Uh, but uh, anyway, we're going to be looking at some other ideas and uh, uh, hope that we can work it out because, uh, yeah, yeah, it'll definitely happen. I just say, it's just a matter of where, you know, it won't be like 2004. See, in 2004, we ended up taking money in from vendors uh, before we had the venue secured, and then we couldn't get the venue, and then we ended up having to cancel and pay that money back, and some of it, and we'd spent some of it. So it was a bad, bad scene. And so I, this year, uh, this time, I tried raising funds uh, differently. In other words, I haven't, taken in volunteer applications, or even sponsors for that matter yet, because I don't want to take any money unless I know we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know we are, but you know what I mean, we're yeah. going to get the venue. So anyway, uh, that's what we're working on. Uh, and then I wanted to do a quick story. This is from marijuana.com. It's called, It's Time to Move Beyond Street Theater. And this is by Keith Strop, who is the founder of Normal. And uh, by the way, speaking of normal, that's something else I need to update you on. Our North, our uh, normal chapter, we've uh, it's disbanded. We are not doing a normal chapter anymore. Not anymore. What's no, that? they well, they wanted us to recertify our chapter, right. and they sent us all kinds of stuff. We had to get a bank account. We had to send them our bank statements. We had to get a, a email account, a, 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 a Gmail email account. I mean, it's just uh, it's just you know, on and on and on. And you just had to do all this stuff, you know. In the meantime, they took our phone number off the national uh, website for Eugene, Oregon, and they left Oregon Normal up, which is not a normal chapter. It's, there's no normal chapter. All that is the phone number for a lawyer that's fishing for clients. <laughs> and so, but he's still up, but they took us down, you know. And so I just, finally, I, I just got fed up. And I, you know, I, I never was a big fan of normal anyway, uh, but I just got fed up with them, you know. They don't have any respect for anybody else but themselves. That's and uh, so, normal. but anyway, so back to normal. And this is Keith Strop, the uh, uh, founder of normal. And he says, I cringed last weekend when I saw news photos of a protest and demonstration in front of the White House 
in which the most notable image was a 51-foot inflatable joint. That's right, here we are in 2016 on the verge of finally ending marijuana prohibition, and some activists seem caught in a time warp, using tactics more suitable for the 1960s and 1970s. I question not only their tactics, but also their political focus. The latest example of street theater came courtesy of DCMJ, the local group in DC who led the successful voter initiative to legalize marijuana in the District of Columbia in 2014. They deserve our appreciation for helping move reform forward in DC, where adults are permitted to possess up to two ounces of marijuana, to go up to six plants for their personal use, and to give up to an ounce of marijuana to another adult for no remuneration. This latest protest, though, was both misguided and counterproductive. The wrong target. First, the stated purpose of the protest was to put pressure on President Obama, whom the group claimed had done nothing to legalize marijuana. The Obama administration has been a big zero on cannabis reform, the organizers of the event, ale event alleged in their press conference announcing the White House protest. Apparently, they were unaware at the extraordinary action taken by President Obama to instruct his Department of Justice to step aside and allow the first few states that legalized marijuana to implement those laws without federal interference. That unprecedented uh, action was an enormous gift to the legalization movement and permitted us to demonstrate that marijuana can be successfully legalized and regulated with no significant unintended consequences. Under any prior administration, the Department of Justice would have filed for an injunction in federal court, seeking to use federal law to enjoy, enjoin the provisions in these new state laws, licensing the commercial cultivation and sale of marijuana. Most legal observers agree they would have, they would have been successful based on the supremacy clause of the U.S. Constitution. It is experience of these first few states that allow us to argue with authority that legalization is a legitimate a option to prohibition, ignoring the see, ignoring ignoring statistics of this decision by President Obama to, in order to justify some street theater suggests a lack of political sophistication. Also, President Obama has commuted sentences of nearly 200 federal, federal drug prisoners, including a number of people serving life sentences for nonviolent marijuana offenses, and promises national, additional uh, nonviolent offenders will be pardoned or, other, or otherwise released from jail over the remaining months of his administration. It is difficult to imagine a public protest intended to embarrass the president would be a helpful tactic at this juncture. Uh, let me jump out of the story for a minute, and that's there's a case of Danville. If he was under marijuana charges, that he, yeah. you know, but maybe. But uh, the way mm. things, are, you know, it's uh, mm. anyway. It's mm. our friend Don Danville, which is another case, and we can talk about it another time. But yeah. uh, anyway, it's going a long time. Uh, I'm, I'll have to finish this the next on the second half. But uh, interesting point. Uh, see the other side. See if they have to say, uh, and. Uh, uh, see. Oh yeah, and uh, let's see. oh, at Hempfest. I want to tell you guys about the Hempfest. We're so we're working on that, and uh, we uh, haven't aren't doing any meetings at this, at this time. We're also not taking volunteer applications. Oh, we are taking volunteer applications, but not vendor applications. Applications, excuse me, until we get a venue. Uh, uh, Confirmed, that's the word. I was looking like first it came to me. <laughs> Confirmed. So anyway, we're gonna be right back for the second half of the episode six hundred and if you're an adult who enjoys a good beer, there's a similar product you might want to know about. One without all the calories and serious health problems. Less toxic so it doesn't cause hangovers or overdose deaths, and it's not linked to violence or reckless behavior. Marijuana less harmful than alcohol and time to treat it that way for more information visit marijuana is safer.org okay we're back it's like a bad debt second half of episode 610 you got dank here and you got a friend jeff newcomb just came back from california yep. and uh how long ago was it how long was you down there year and a half year and, all right year yep. and a half and uh and, by, and uh, uh <clears throat> Jeff was telling me that the medical situation down there is uh, not quite up to standards that we have. <laughs> so 
That's always good to hear. Uh, by far. Yeah, uh, and it's really crazy. And by the way, uh, Gene Weekly, have you, pick, have you picked up an issue of Gene Weekly this week? Yeah, I did. Uh, boy, they got a lot of interesting. I haven't uh, looked at, I look at it yet, though. Ads and stuff. Hmm. I haven't looked at ads. Oh, I haven't seen it yet? No, no, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, they've, uh, they've got a, a, I guess it's the last, um, what is it, the last issue of the month or something. Anyway, it's supposed to be like the marijuana issue, and so they've got their double page thing with buds that are featured in the different oh, dispensaries yeah, and cool. stuff, you know. And of course there's ads, 420 coming up, there's yeah. a bunch of places that got 420 events that are going, you know, yeah, that's cool. uh, special sales and stuff. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's real interesting. Uh, legalization, uh, it's, uh, it's like a friend of mine said, uh, it doesn't look anything like he thought it would, <laughs> which is, it isn't, but at the same time, Mm -hmm. It is, we, it is a good thing where we're at, you know. It's um, and something that I read right before I came in. Pennsylvania becomes the twenty-fourth state to legalize medical marijuana. They did. That's awesome. Yeah, twenty-fourth state. Mm -hmm. I remember years ago. I don't know if you remember this or seen it, but years mm -hmm. ago there was a guy at Saturday Market that used to do these hemp T-shirts, printed uh, uh, screen printing. Yeah. He had a picture of the United States with all the states drawn, uh, lined up, and then they had a medical marijuana symbol for each state that had. I remember had that guy. Remember that? Him, him, that guy yeah, him. and I don't know what happened to them, but I'd like to see one today. You imagine yeah, 24 like states out of 48 50. now, uh, half your half states covered. That would be awesome. <laughs> but it's great. Yeah, it's coming around kind of slow, but uh, but uh, you know, we we're, we're getting it, there. So let me finish this story that I was reading here about. Uh, this is from Keith. Uh, Keith Strop talking about legalization. He says, the wrong time. Public protests have at times played a powerful role in our country's history, most notably in building public opposition to unpopular wars, including especially the Vietnam War. However, these demonstrations involved hundreds, and thousands, hundreds of thousands of citizens and demonstrated mass support for ending the war. The latest protests at the White House involved perhaps 100 protesters, and rather than demonstrating mass opposition to President Obama and his marijuana policies, showing a handful of activists more concerned with seeing themselves on the evening news and engaging in the hard work of actually changing public policy. The utilization of the 51-foot inflatable joint left the impression this was more than fun, this was more about fun in the park and less about serious political change. Keep in mind that the city council in the District of Columbia has been actively discussing the need to license commercial growers and retail sellers of marijuana. This would have done it, they, they would have done this earlier, but for a provision attached by Congress on the district's budget. Congress retains the right to review and possibly reject actions by our elected city council, is what they wrote. Under the terms of a recent court case in D.C., it now appears the council may adopt a legally regulated marijuana market uh, if they use only money raised from D.C. residents, excluding money provided by the district, of, uh, the district by Congress. The council members understand they need to tread carefully in this area to, do, to avoid a backlash from the more conservative members of Congress, but a clear majority want to move forward. Witnessing the juvenile demonstration at the White House could only complicate this delicate dance the D.C. City Council is trying to make regarding marijuana policy in the district. Instead of symbolically blowing smoke in their faces, these local activists could have been meeting with our supporters on the city council to discuss how best to move forward with the least resistance from Congress. Apparently, that would not have been nearly as much fun, nor would it have resulted in their being covered in the local news. All of us who engage in public advocacy for legalization need to be sure we are taking actions that move the legalization movement forward and not confusing media coverage with political progress. All news is not good news, and some news coverage definitely sets us back. <clears throat> the latest street theater at the White House was one of those times. Though few of us were involved, none of the national reform organizations, it made us look less than serious and politically naive and did nothing to move us closer to full legalization in the district or to encourage President Obama to push marijuana law for reform further under federal law. So anyway, that's uh, uh, there you have it from uh, Keith Strop. 
uh, and uh, it's things I uh, look at it at a different angle, you know. And uh, so, is there anything particularly you wanted to speak about tonight? Uh, I mean, I know you want to come and see well, me on yeah, the show, but um, anything you want to, I want to be sure and give you some time to yeah, say what you want to I talk mean, about. I'm looking for a place to stay right now. Okay. Uh, I'm not living with the guy I'm living right now. Okay. Is Oh yeah. Uh, me okay. You're not too bad, but well, you can get a hold of uh, get a hold of me, the Dank Bagman at Hotmail dot com email, and draw me a line, and I would love to get you in, ch in touch with Jeff. You can help him yeah, out with some I, I'm, housing I'm, or have I, some ideas. I, I'm I'm a friendly friendly person. I'm um, clean. I can. I can make meals. I can go shopping. What do you need, what do you need help with? Just a place to stay. Okay, all you need is a place to stay. You can do. Yeah, you can I, take everything. I, I okay, take my cell phone. I take my cell phone. Yeah. I do everything by myself. There you go. Yeah, uh, the only thing has to be the main thing would be uh, 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 access to where you get the wheelchair in and I out. I can walk. Of course. I can walk. I can walk. Oh, and he can walk, so he, he can. Uh, if he's got like a bathroom that's I, a problem, he can uh, leave the chair and walk into the bathroom. Right? Okay, yeah. yeah. I had that, had that in my, my apartment in California. Yeah, that's the way my dad was. Oh, he he had dad. to. Uh, he was paralyzed, and so he had the house that he had. He had to have a little wheelchair with little wheels on it, <laughs> and he would get off his chair and onto that, and then he would roll well, to the toilet okay. with it. You know. But anyway, so good. Well, we definitely could. If you could find some housing for Jeff, we would really appreciate it. He is a great guy. I speak for him uh, personally, uh, and uh, so you can you know uh, can help him out with that. So well, have you've been back a week. Have you been? How many dispensaries have you been to so far? None. None. Oh, well, of course. I got a card. Duh. So, but of course we do have retail sales now, so you can go those. But uh, yeah, that's. Uh, well, what are those like? I don't know. I haven't been to one really. Well, I mean, I've been to a couple of dispensaries. I guess they're selling retail, but uh, it doesn't seem to be any any, any, any big change. Uh, but. Uh, <coughs> But you already need the card. Are you now? Are you going to? Uh, so you got to go find the clinic then. Yeah, uh, uh, it's expensive. The same price as it was last time. Yeah, pretty much. It seems to be running about 150 for the for the clinic, and then uh, yeah, f um, and then yeah for the clinic, and uh, then the card, I'm and then the card. I'm gonna just date. Same price. I I can't remember offhand. I, I got 130. Same price. 130. I can't remember. I, I, I can't so long. I can't remember now. And plus, they've been messing all the prices mm -hmm. too. And I, I can't remember. We'd have to look into that. But uh, yeah, uh, Southern Oregon Alternative would probably be the one, pl uh, probably one, one of the places I would recommend uh, like for clinic. But I don't know what they charge. What about um, Crunk Care over there on the corner of Six and it works? What's that? Crunk Care. Chronic care. Oh, chronic care. Yeah, oh, of course. Good them. point. Of course. Them, yeah, yeah we're all about chronic care. That'd be a good one. Another we'll one. Them. In fact, I mean, I'm going to make a note to myself, and I'll give those guys a call because I need to talk to them anyway. So I'll, I'll in fact. Uh, it's probably better than going to um, what, compassion center. Yeah, could, could, I don't know. In fact, that reminds me. I'll write down the compassion center too. Uh, I got a friend of mine now. It's a board on the board. Compassion. Chairman. Yeah. Compassion yeah. center. Yeah. Compassion center. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, well, let's check into that and then uh, see. Uh, so that's Chronic uh, Compassion Center, and uh, what was the? I just uh, forgot what was the other one I was going to do. Uh, oh, Southern Oregon. Okay. So anyway, uh, we'll definitely look into those and uh, see what we can do and get you uh, get your cart. And I just. Uh, <coughs> Became a caretaker again, so I'm. I've got my card now. The caretaker from me. And uh, hmm? yeah, caretaker. Okay. Oh, and I forgot to mention the Umpqua Hemp Fest. I almost completely forgot this one, and I should have mentioned it last week. Uh, <coughs> this is coming up June 18th, and it's a one-day event, which is a little bit. I thought it was kind of odd, but uh, they have weird. three stages and camping, but it's one, only a one-day event. <laughs> But I didn't get to go last year. Great people. Uh, uh, Na uh, Nathan uh, Nathan Marsh is the organizer, and he came up for our Hemp Fest last year, and came up for one of our meetings too. Seemed like a real nice guy. But uh, I didn't. I was. I was. I was uh, not doing well uh, physically, and I wasn't able to go last year. So hopefully this year we can go. He offered us a free booth and everything, but I just I couldn't make it. Just wouldn't, you know. So anyway. 
It says the Umqual Valley hemp, fa hemp Fest was started in 2015 and was and was the first licensed hemp fest outside the original Seattle Hemp Fest. The Hemp Fest is more than just music and vendors, of course, and a percentage of ticket sales goes to two nonprofits: the Seattle Events Nonprofit that started the Hemp Fest brand and Umqua Cannabis Association. We also want to harness the interest in the event and funnel it to help our commercial, our common goals in overturning local bans and continuing the progression of sensible rules and regulations. This event is being held in Douglas County for the second year. The same county that was first to ban and will be one of the many critical votes in November. We are looking for speakers that can help with our symposium and or speak on the main stage. John Sajo from the UCA will be the keynote speaker, and we also have Sandy Diesel speaking on the main stage for Right to Grow. If you would like to speak or be on a panel at the Hipposium, please reply to this email or give me a call. So uh, again, that's the, uh, and the website is umquacannabisassociation.com. That's the uh, website for the uh, Cannabis Association. And then the Hemp Fest is umquahempfest.com. So, so <laughs> right. phone number 541. Yeah, the phone number is 541 and 670-2899. 2899, that's correct. So if you want to find out about their Hemp Fest and get signed up, a great bunch of people. I had a friend who went last year and he really enjoyed it and had a great time. And uh, yeah. it's interesting because, <clears throat> like he mentions, that they're the licensed Hemp Fest. And I heard oh, that the Hemp Fest was doing that, that they uh, had uh, branded that word Hemp Fest. But they never said, I haven't heard a That's word from them. We've had it since 2003, and I'm, I'm kind of anxious. We have longer than that. Do I? We have longer than that. No, 2003. It was, yeah, we started in yeah, right? 2003, the first year of the event. So anyway, we're running out of time, and I appreciate you, Jeff, coming in. And Jeff My literally friend. drove in. He drove in on his wheels. So <laughs> I did mention You bet, that. Jeff. Well, thanks for coming in, and it's uh, so good to see you back in Oregon and have Jeff as an Oregonian again. That is I'll all be good back news. in the state of Oregon. Did you go down to the Saturday market yet? Yeah, I went down my... I nice. bet. And you're trying to figure out where in hell I was, right? Yeah, I look for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you where bet. Where uh, you want, yeah. yeah, I haven't been doing that. Uh, I haven't been doing that much in the last few years. So we'll see you next week. Got Dank and yeah, Jeff. Thanks. We'll see you. See you. Bye. Bye.